Hello everyone, Sunderak here. So in today's video, I want to talk about Shignori Hanzu. I, I know everyone saw he's gonna be the Nemo support for Shao, or at least a Nemo support, but turns out he's gonna be the next Nemo DPS, or at least sub DPS. So for today, I want you to take a look over his uh, skills and uh, elemental bursts and things like that, but however, I won't be doing weapon recommendations and things like that, because he's still very early in beta, so anything from his uh, side can still change and I think I'll do another video near the end of 2.8 beta by then we'll have much more solid numbers and also by then we can get a better idea on what weapons what artifacts he's best with also for artifacts for any more users it's pretty much always four set uh, very decent veneer unless you have a much better option so with that said let's get started so uh, Shikinori Hanzu is an Animo user and it uh, he is confirmed a Callus user four star. However, um, the most accurate way to predict his playstyle is actually he is a playable Animo boxer, uh, a Fatui Animo boxer, if that makes sense. Um, basically, all of his styles involves, even though it's using a catalyst, but all of his styles are basically uh, fist uh, fist bumps or kicks that are infused with Animo infusion. So essentially, turning him into the first. Uh, close combat user in Genshin. Also, I guess in future they will catalyst. Uh, they will categorize them under um, catalyst user, just so that um, all their normal attacks can also be of the correct element as well. So taking a look at his base stats, uh, I don't think there's anything impressive to say. The only thing I want to mention about his base stats, again, because everything can change, but the only thing I want to mention is that he ascends with a Nemo damage bonus. So right off the bat, this is a very good hint that instead of playing as uh, the support that everyone saw he's going to be, he's actually going to be taking the main stage and doing most of the damage. As for Ascension Materials, only quickly just want to mention, the local specialty is going to be the only Kabuto. You might want to start farming if you're looking to get him, uh, those take quite a while. Um, I speed farmed those for my friend for Ito, um, it was such a pain. Uh, as for the boss Ascension Material, it's going to be the giant mechanical snake in the underground chasm, so um, you can start farming that as well. That's also the Ascension Material for uh, Yelen and also uh, Kuki Shinobu. So moving on to his normal attacks, uh, again, I won't be looking at the rates here because he is going to, he's still in beta, so everything can still change. Uh, but the base idea is that his normal attack, unlike normal Catalyst user, is going to be up to five um, close range combats, so up to five um, hits, I believe, uh, no kicks. His charge attack is going to be an upward kick, cannot show any footage here, sadly. And his plunging attack is going to be the same as any Catalyst user's. And there is nothing special, like no special effects, uh, nothing that attached with his uh, normal attack, because those are normally reserved for 5 star users. Moving on to his E, his E is called Heartstopper Strike. Of course, um, that's the rough translation, there will be a better translation out later on. Uh, his E has two modes, there is the tap and the hold, and also there is one special effect you can get called Declension, uh, which comes after holding his E and charging up four times. So the first one, tap, is just uh, wields the wind and launches uh, a single strike that deals AoE animal damage. Hold allows you to charge up the energy. Uh, he will obtain the declaration effect while charging and it will also increase the power of the strike. And um, after he gets four hits, uh, after he um, gets four declension, sorry, after he gets four declension, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce the word, uh, stacks, the uh, conviction effect will be triggered. Uh, that not only further increases his damage uh, for the E, it also gives him a larger AoE. There is also uh, one of his passives that allows him to get uh, declension um, while not charging, so he will be able to use uh, conviction uh, and get the full stack when not charging. The only thing I want to note here is that even though it's not stated on paper here, but when you have the full stuff up, uh, when you have the full thing up, his whole damage is going to be over a thousand percent, which is pretty huge for four star. So I think Mihoyo is setting him up to be a pretty successful four star DPS. Of course, he will not be able to compare with five stars just simply due to the lower base attack and also uh, lower rates in his skills. But I think they're setting him up to be a very um, beginner friendly um, 
at, or at least intermediate uh, intermediary player friendly uh, four star DPS that people can use to transition before they move to five star DPSs. Moving on to his Q, his Q is basically he leaps into the air and then back kicks out a vacuum ball. The uh, vacuum ball, the proper terminology for it is called a vacuum slugger. When vacuum slugger hits opponents with another element, so the four currently that uh, animal can swirl, so hydro, pyro, cryo, or electro, uh, those opponents are going to be further marked with something called wind muster iris. Uh, Windmaster Iris will trigger after the vacuum ball um, explodes. It will cause a second explosion and it will also deal the corresponding elemental damage uh, when doing that explosion. The good thing to note for his um, Q is that his Q only costs 40 energy and only has a cooldown of 12 seconds. So I believe this is why he's going to be a main DPS. Uh, we're going to further talk about what makes him a main DPS in his talents because that's there's going to be one that basically allows him to get off a full charge E at all times. So talking about the first um, talent, which is his useless one, uh, decrease sprinting stamina consumption by 20% for uh, your own party members, cannot stack with other people's talents. So his first actual talent, the useful one, uh, when Shikinori Henzu activates a swirl reaction while on the field, he will gain one declension stack for his E, and this effect can be triggered once 0.1 seconds. Uh, why this is important, uh, when you look at his normal attack, again cannot show footage the whole duration takes slightly over three seconds and the safe estimation for that is it can trigger around four swirls if in a good situation so essentially what you uh what you can do is you can do one cycle of auto going into a e with a full stack getting all the advantage and afterwards you can that pretty much charges up your q uh, if you have a good amount of er or somewhere else and then then you can go back and plus the fact that his e has a cd of 10 seconds uh doing two cycles of auto or three cycles will definitely be enough time to get a fully stacked e going um, so that's essentially why he, I believe he is going to be a main DPS. And his second passive, after Shikinori Hanzu's um, hard uh, stopper strike with his E, hits an opponent, increase all party member, excluding himself, elemental mastery by 80 for 10 seconds. Now this is, um, I believe this is more used for him to support other team members, but this is his only support side of capabilities. I don't think, um, because this I believe it generally used, um, if for example, someone like, uh, Yamiko who scales off elemental mastery is going to be take advantage of this. But, uh, when it comes to talking about potential teams, I believe this has a very good usage later on. Moving on to constellations, um, all six of his constellations are kind of useful. Um, so, uh, plus he's a four star, so I think it's rather easy to get constellations. Of course, that depends on whose banner he's on. Hopefully, he's on Kazuha's banner, so most people can uh, get a few constellations from him. So, C1 for five seconds after using his, uh, for five seconds after he takes the field, his normal attack speed will be increased by fifteen percent. He gains one declension stack. Uh, just he just gains one stack for his E, and this effect can be triggered once every 10 seconds. Uh, I don't think it's gonna get used a lot unless you're using uh, the combo where you take him off field for a while. You go on field, you start attacking, go through one cycle of normal attack, get all four swirls going, get a full stacked E, then ho uh, then basically tap and get a full E going, and then follow up with a Q, then leave field. So unless you play him that style, I don't think C1 is going to be too useful, but it's nice about the uh, normal attack speed increase. Um, and of course, uh, this triggers once every 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds, I believe you'll have to swap to someone else to cast their E or Q. So that just happens um, pretty much instantaneously. For his C2, when the um, when his Q's vacuum slogger created by his Q um, explodes, it will pull a nearby opponent's in. So this is very good for him because uh, currently he has no CC. And when we all know Anemo characters are sort of meant to have a bit of CC, Shao's the main one who have zero crowd control. So most of the time you do have to pair him with another character that gives him crowd control, or you, you have to basically hit enemy in a way that they're getting not knocked back. So this basically covers up that side for him. But like Ningguang C1, uh, I don't believe the um, 
polling is going to be very significant so i don't think it's going to make much of a difference c3 and c5 is increasing the uh three levels of uh, e and q respectively so i won't talk about it c4 the first um Wind Monster Explosion for each um, Q will generate 9 energy particles for Shikinori Henzu. Every subsequent explosion will generate an additional 1.5 energy particles. And that can get a maximum of 13.5 energy particles in this manner. This is very useful. Basically, instead of... It's like uh, that Jean's uh, passive or constellation. I forgot which one. Uh, after she casts her Q, she gains, I think... 12 energy or something back it's something along those lines essentially it further lowers his q casting uh time which i believe is good because um shikinori henzu's playstyle i believe is going to be actually like playing league of legends uh for some champions that are close range you just um basically spam uh auto uh, normally and as soon as your q is ready you just go ham um and basically cast those as fast as possible to get as many cycles going as possible and finally, C6, which I think is going to be the main one. Uh, each declaration stack will increase the crit rate of E by 4%. And when he has all four stacks, so he has a conviction um, stack on, then the um, Q, uh, then the E's um, damage, uh, crit damage will increase by further by 32%. So this is basically more damage for his E, which is great because I think uh, E is going to be his main source of damage because. Um, his um, auto attack, again, is not rated very high at the moment. So, uh, skipping weapons, because uh, I don't have good recommendations off the top of my head at the moment. And again, every number will change. So, uh, it's probably better to talk about weapons once he is close to release date. But for artifacts, I would probably still recommend 4P's uh, Veridescent Veneer, because that's just what every animal character uses. Uh, including Xiao before, sorry. Uh, two piece was what Xiao was using, but yeah, I still would recommend uh, Veridescent Veneer unless there's a better one for him. Don't have any off the top of my head at the moment. As for teams, I think there's going to be two styles of teams he slots into. The first one is, of course, rec uh, a version of Taser teams. So if you aren't aware of Taser team, it's essentially two Electro, one Hydro, plus one Anemo most of the time. Uh, Sucrose was originally the Anemo spa. Uh, some teams, t some Taser teams don't even run Anemo. But I think he will work best uh, fitting to one of those teams because then you can basically run uh, Sucrose as originally you would run Sucrose as the main DPS. Uh, a Hydro support, in this case Kokomi or Barbara, and then Fish and Beto for the Taser team damage. In this case, you can swap out Sucrose, who was mostly in charge of buffing the other people, and then you can swap to uh, Shikinori Henzu, who actually does more damage on his own. And this all is what also makes his second passive of buffing Elemental Mastery by 80 useful because um, uh, Kokomi or Barbara and Beto and Fisher are going to be able to take uh, usage of that 80% of uh, that 80 mastery to further increase the Elemental Reaction damage. Uh, the other type of teams I will see him slotting into is once Dendros comes out. I think he's actually able to slot into teams where, um, because so far from what we know, uh, Anemo will not be reacting with um, Anemo will not be reacting with Dendro, so I think he will be slotting into teams where um, Dendro, uh, Dendro and Electro, or Dendro and Hydro is the main reaction, but he is just there to make sure that all the elements are getting covered all the time, so that people, uh, so that elemental reactions are always uh, getting produced as fast as possible. So that's the other style of teams I can see him slotting into, but generally I wouldn't recommend it to build him as like slotting in the same amount of uh, resources as a 5 star DPS because I don't think he will be up there uh, because otherwise why would Behoyo still sell 5 star characters at that point but I can definitely see him being a very solid 4 star DPS and potentially um, in the future um, for it's going, he's going to be a good uh, starting character for people who have reached in the Zuma before they can really pull for a 5-star DPS. He's a good transition character. But of course, given that um, his local specialty and his um, 
talent ascension materials are not uh, local to Mondstadt or Lua, so I wouldn't say he's a good starter character because you can't really build him in the early game. But I would say he's someone who you can definitely slot into for people who are transitioning between a beginner's account to someone who is in the end game stage. And finally, I mean, he's a Nemo character. His skills look fun to use. Um, he's definitely going to be one of the funner characters to play and personally i would definitely build him because uh it's a completely new style of playing basically no um it's just all animo infused fist fist attacks which is gonna be very cool to see so that's all i have for him if you like the video please like comment and subscribe and have a nice day